Uh, so Hillary, Hillary's an untouchable. She sees herself as above the law, and so far she is. Now, we're hearing rumblings from within the FBI. They're developing two lines of inquiry against her. The first is the email server, uh, and the second is the racketeering. And the racketeering came out of a lawsuit filed by Larry Clayman down in Florida uh, that was showing this very strong link between uh, foreign nations that donated to the Clinton Foundation uh, and those who got favorable treatment from the State Department under Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. A secret Canadian gold play revealed. Near-term gold producer is about to become the hottest hard asset play in North America. Deep value in production in 2016. A mill that is worth over $125 million. Today, the entire company's market cap is less than $25 million. Gold production is being ramped up to begin in less than 12 months. According to their PEA, this will be a low-cost producer with a cash cost of $613 per ounce of gold. Learn more at crushthestreet.com slash MXL. Hello, everyone, and welcome into crushthestreet.com. I got a special interview today, someone who's extremely researched and knows his stuff. His name is Michael Rivero of the very popular website, What Really Happened? Dot com and uh, the popular radio show, What Really Happened. And he's a guy who's dug into many questionable events to extract the truth. Things like 9-11, JFK assassination, the war on terror, and uh, much more. And he's extremely well-researched and has a superior understanding over your average Joe Schmo on the economy and so much more. Uh, he's actually a returning guest and uh, he spares you the corporate media false narrative and gives it to you straight. So Michael Rivero, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you for having me on the show, and thank you for that glowing uh, introduction. I hope I live up to expectations. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Michael, I want to start our conversation, like I said we would, uh, with the presidential race, specifically Hillary Clinton. And just this week, it became solidified through inevitable math, officially, that Hillary Clinton will be the Democratic presidential nominee over Bernie Sanders although Bernie Sanders said he's not bowing out until the convention. Regardless, let's get your thoughts and opinions on the matter. Is Hillary Clinton going to jail for her email scandal, uh, regardless of all that's going on with her success in the polls? Well, first of all, I question her success in the polls. I mean, there has been massive election fraud all during the primary season. The corporate media keeps saying, oh, it's a mistake, it's a glitch, it's a, you know, so, you know, something just happened, it was an accident. But all of the glitches and accidents always seem to favor Hillary Clinton. And uh, statistics are going to tell you, if they were real accidents and real mistakes, half should benefit Hillary Clinton and half should benefit Bernie Sanders, but that's not the pattern that we're seeing. And we know that there have been all kinds of game playing uh, with the ballots. Uh, we know that there were massive numbers of illegal immigrants registered to vote in California, and maybe they voted and maybe their registrations were simply used for mail-in ballots. Uh, but uh, the, the election, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is absolutely delegitimized, and I'm not trusting these results. We know that Hillary wants that presidency. She's willing to do anything she has to to get it. And there's a warning message there, because anyone who's willing to do anything to attain power is going to be equally willing to do absolutely anything with it. Mm. Well, I mean, in in that same vein, then, uh, it would be fair to say that Bernie Sanders got screwed, regardless of our opinion on his policy. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question that there's been massive fraud in this election. I mean, uh, there are lawsuits already being filed out in California. They're refusing to release the exit polling data. And uh, here in Hawaii, uh, you know, I, I can find very, very few Hillary supporters. Uh, I like to walk around in public with this T-shirt that says Hillary for prison, and the people who think it's great outnumber the people who don't like it by seven to one. So that, to me, is a very accurate measure of public sentiment regarding Hillary Clinton. Uh, but the corporate media is fully on board with shoving Hillary Clinton uh, down our throats. Uh, and I keep hearing these rumors that, that Hillary has sent out messages saying that if she is not made president of the United States of America, she's going to start ruining careers and possibly damaging the government. Because over the last quarter of a century, the Clintons have been up to their neck in some of the darkest secrets 
uh, of the U.S. government, Iran-Contra, gun and cocaine smuggling. Uh, and you were mentioning before, is she going to go to jail for the email scandal? She ought to. I mean, she has violated uh, felony sections of Title 18, and we're hearing from Attorney General Loretta Lynch that she doesn't think these risks of espionage or anything really need to be prosecuted, but by golly, she's going to sue those global warming deniers out of existence. Mm. And uh, so at this point, Hillary is definitely getting very favorable treatment. She's committed far more egregious violations of national security than Petraeus did, and he got hounded out of his, his job. Mm. And uh, so Hillary, Hillary's an untouchable. She sees herself as above the law, and so far she is. Now, we're hearing rumblings from within the FBI. They're developing two lines of inquiry against her. The first is the email server, uh, and the second is the racketeering. And the racketeering came out of a lawsuit filed by Larry Clayman down in Florida uh, that was showing this very strong link between uh, foreign nations that donated to the Clinton Foundation uh, and those who got favorable treatment from the State Department under Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Mm. So uh, Larry Clayman had the misfortune of having his case assigned to a Clinton-appointed judge who just tossed the case out without uh, even considering any of the evidence. At this point, the FBI stepped in and took over the investigation. Now, we keep hearing rumblings that Comey is going to recommend indictments. We know Loretta Lynch is going to uh, refuse to go along with that. And uh, But we're also hearing that there are insiders in the FBI who are ready to go public and start leaking information uh, because... Uh, uh, they, they've just reached the point uh, uh, of being fed up with the criminality uh, of the Clintons, and uh, they're, they're looking at how pro-war uh, Hillary is. If you look at her track record as Secretary of State, she never hesitated to send in troops and bombs and drone strikes. She thinks it's a great deal of fun, and we're already hovering close to the edge of a nuclear war. And a lot of people are very worried that you know, Hillary Clinton could easily be the last president of the United States, because if she gets us into a world war, we're likely to lose it. Our, our military stockpiles are, are drawn down and worn out from all the wars the U.S. has been in going back to 2003. Uh, the new weapons being produced by our defense contractors are hideously expensive, and they're not very good, the F-35 being a good example of that. So it, we, we're, we're not really prepared to win a conventional war against Russia and China, uh, which means at some point it's going to go nuclear, and even then we are not likely to win that one, because both Russia and China have a new generation of maneuverable delivery vehicles for nuclear warheads, and the entire U.S. ballistic missile defense system is based on a doctrine of an incoming threat following a predictable ballistic arc. And that is now completely out the window. Mm. Well, Michael, uh, I mean, between Hillary, you know, our options for president is Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, uh, unless something dramatically changes, which I don't see. Would you say who, who's more likely to take us into war, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump for president? Uh, definitely Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump is already on record saying that he'd like to go back to being friends with Russia and China, trade with them, do business. He's a businessman. He's all about selling products and making money. And uh, uh, if you look especially at the foreign press, especially the Israeli media, uh, they absolutely want Hillary. They know Hillary is going to do whatever Israel wants. Trump is making the polite noises about Hillary uh, to uh, please the American Jewish voters. Uh, but as far as Israel's government is concerned, they absolutely absolutely do not want him anywhere near the White House. And I wouldn't write off the possibility of something dramatic happening to Donald Trump, because he is as big a threat to the established uh, insider elite as Robert Kennedy was. Mm. Robert Kennedy had already indicated if he won the presidency, he was going to reopen the case into the assassination of his older brother, John F. Kennedy. And uh, so they shot him literally, you know, right out of the campaign uh, in California. Uh, and so at, at this point, the, the established media, corporate media and government have been trying to use the Ron Paul approach on Donald Trump. It hasn't worked. And I absolutely would not view a potential assassination uh, as, as something we shouldn't be taking into our planning and consideration at this point. Mm. Yeah, that was but one thing. I'm sorry. One one thing that is really obvious to all voters of both of these parties is how 
badly they've become disconnected from choosing the government uh, between the Republican uh, insiders trying to keep Trump out, uh, between the Democratic insiders who uh, very clearly were prejudiced toward putting Hillary in, both Republican and Democratic voters are coming to realize they've been disenfranchised. The contract uh, with the government in which we the people select our own leaders has be, is broken. Uh, we're, we're getting once again to pick, you know, our, our, our choice of a pre-approved insider. And they just hand the throne back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and nobody's allowed to come in from the outside. That's why Trump is such a threat uh, to what's going on, because if he becomes president, he's going to shake up Washington, D.C., which is in bad need of a good shaking. Mm. Michael, you know, some people, to be fair, have questioned Donald Trump's authenticity as a non-establishment candidate. You know, headline news not that long ago was that Trump picked a former Goldman Sachs partner and a Soros employee as the finance chairman. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, regarding this and Trump? Well, the fact that he's not an establishment politician is why he's doing so well. Tr uh, Trump is a classic reactionary president coming in from the outside and supported by voters who are tired of business as usual, politics as usual, war as usual, NSA spying as usual, Obamacare as usual. If the federal government had been doing a good job for the people of the United States of America, Trump's campaign would have been at best a footnote. Mm. But Trump's entire support and popularity is coming from Americans who are just fed up with the entire current system and they want to see it go. Mm. Michael, I want to get uh, a couple more thoughts on Clinton here and uh, the Clinton Foundation. Soon after Hillary Clinton quit her job in 2013, uh, she, she joined up with the, the Clinton Foundation to a larger degree, and she accepted foreign government donors, including Saudi Arabia, Oman, and the United Arab Emirates. And it was found out that the Clinton Foundation accepted millions of dollars in foreign government donation while she was serving in the State Department. And most of those donations were technically allowed due to many exemptions, including the so-called ban. However, at least one of these donations, 500000 from the Algerian government, violated the ban and uh, was not the reported to the state's department's ethics office. And I, I just, you know, any more insight on what has happened with the, the Clinton Foundation scandal and why she shouldn't be president? Well, this is the heart of the whole racketeering uh, uh, case that Larry Clayman created and the FBI has now taken over, because those uh, governments that were donating to the Clinton Foundation while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State got improved access, they got weapons deals, they got favorable treatment. Uh, the quid pro quo is very obvious to anybody who wants to take a look at it. Now, we don't know everybody who donated to the Foundation, because the Clinton Foundation maintained two... I guess you would call them field offices, one in Canada and one in Europe. And what would happen is those offices would be accepting donations, then they would lump them together and forward the money, and it appears on the ledgers of the Clinton Foundation as from the Canadian office, from the European office, and there's no trail to see where this money came from. Now, why this is of paramount importance, and it's linked into the email server issue, is you need to remember back in 1996, uh, there was a Clinton scandal called Chinagate. And what happened is when President Bill Clinton was running for re-election, he authorized the sale of very sensitive technology to China over the objection of the Pentagon and the intelligence agencies, and huge amounts of money started pouring into his re-election campaign from Chinese-American citizens. Now, when Congress started to investigate, it turned out this money was coming from China, including, in one case, Chinese intelligence. And the scandal was called Chinagate, and the only reason it and these other scandals were never investigated is because Congress subpoenaed emails from the White House, but, oh, gee, golly whiz, the White House email server had a glitch, uh, and a million subpoenaed emails vanished from those hard drives. And, oh, by the way, somebody had manually turned off the backup system just before that happened. Wow. Wow, so much evidence against uh, Clinton. It's amazing it's not more mainstream. Uh, but, you know, guys like you are putting this information out there. So, uh, Michael, what about the system in place? You know, if Wall Street and the big bank candidate doesn't get into office, i.e. Hillary Clinton, are they more likely to pull the plug on the stock market and let this collapse? 
uh, get underway uh, more so under a Trump election than uh, Hillary Clinton? Well, I think uh, there are two overlapping factors. One uh, is that if it looks like Donald Trump could actually win in November, I'm expecting uh, Obama uh, to, to launch the world war uh, before Trump can go on in uh, to the White House and then basically stick Donald Trump with the world war. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, the, uh, the problem with Wall Street is it's all based on this Ponzi scheme of a debt-based uh, economy. And every nation that is enslaved to a privately owned central bank that issues the public currency as a loan at interest is drowning in debt all over the world. There is no such thing as a nation with a private central bank that is being prosperous. Everybody is struggling with debt, and eventually that debt swamps the system. The U.S. economy is heading for a major, major crash. They're trying to hold it off because it is an election year, and they want the incumbents to get uh, elected back in. Uh, but at, at, at the point where Trump takes the White House, they might just say, all right, we're going to go ahead and let it collapse here. Nobody wants the market collapse. Uh, there's one coming. Uh, what they're going to do is try and, and sort of steer it to cause the most damage to, uh, to, to opponents of big banking and Wall Street. Mm. Michael, c can Trump actually beat Hillary Clinton? Do you see that happening here in 2016? Well, uh, again, the evidence that we're seeing here is that this is the crookedest election in U.S. history. They're having to screw those ballots into those ballot boxes. And, uh, we're, and they're almost not even trying to hide uh, the vote fraud that's been going on. And uh, in a fair election, well, in a, in a fair election, uh, Bernie would have won the, uh, the Democratic nomination. And in a fair election, uh, Trump could uh, easily defeat Hillary Clinton. In fact, Hillary Clinton has been afraid of Donald Trump since the very, very beginning. And that's why she was working so hard to try and, and run against Ted Cruz, who was never eligible to be president, or any of the other GOP uh, candidates that she knows she can just steamroll her over. And she knows how to do this because you need to remember one of her first jobs in government was that she worked on the Watergate Committee and she got a close-up look at all the dirty tricks that Richard Nixon's committee to re-elect the president were pulling. And, of course, we now know, uh, by virtue of uh, all the president's men, that Richard Nixon engineered the Democratic campaigns and primaries so that he could run against George McGovern, because he knew he could just run right over McGovern, and that's exactly what happened. And Hillary's been trying to do the same thing with the GOP. So the last person she wanted to be running against was Donald Trump, uh, but she's now stuck with that. And again, this is a very desperate lady, and the closer she gets to the White House, the more desperate uh, maneuver she's going to try uh, to, to guarantee her, her ascendancy, her coronation. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, uh, again, thank you for coming on the show with me today. If people want to reach out to you and learn more about what you do, where would they go? What would they find? And with that, if you have any final comments that you'd like to share with the audience, please do. Well, my website is called WhatReallyHappened.com. It's been around for more than 20 years. I was a blogger before the word had even been coined. And I also do a daily talk radio show from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central U.S. time, Monday through Friday, on the Republic Broadcasting Network. You can find them at RepublicBroadcasting.org. Or if you go to my website, there's a couple of little players uh, that pop up during showtime, and you can click and listen through there.